Lamentations chapter 3. You bring your attention down to verse 21. And in Lamentations chapter 3, beginning at verse 21, Jeremiah says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Verses 21 through 24 for today's reading. Hopefully that you in your quiet time will go back and read in the background scripture. But I want to talk for a few moments for your thinking, for your pondering, for your musing, for your meditating on from the thought of the newness of the morning. The newness of the morning. I'm thankful that we serve the God that we serve. That even though he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, even though he does not change, he recognizes that there is something in us, a restlessness, that we don't like for things to always be the same. He's the God that allows us to experience change. We experience the change of his creation day in and day out. We experience that change from one season to another. And as we look at our God and how he changes the seasons, that uh, there are different colors that we see in our environment different things that we see that change in our environments. The storms have changed the appearance of some things. Earthquakes have changed the appearance of other things. As we get up in the morning and, and we realize that when we rose this morning, that today's beginning was not like yesterday's beginning. That if you observe the sky today as, as the sun rises, that there is a difference in the sky than it was yesterday. And when you get ready to settle down for the evening today, that when the sun sets, uh, when the sun is going down on its western shore, that there will still be a difference in today's sunset than it was in yesterday's sunset. And, and so God has so fixed it that as a created people, that he allows us to experience change. But as he meditates, or he gives Jeremiah the opportunity to meditate in this text, uh, that Jeremiah recognizes that in the midst of his circumstances, that there is a change, that there is something that is happening, that life is not staying the same always. For us, life does not remain the same. In Jeremiah, in chapter 3, he starts out by telling us that he has seen affliction. He tells us that, that, that he's a man of tears, if you will. And that because of the experience in his life that he has wept much. And, and, and it's an awesome thing, my brothers and sisters, to be able to weep over the conditions of, of other folk. To let God know where your heart is and, right. and, and how that... Um, He's able to give us tears and, and give us emotions that we can pour out love toward him and toward one another. Right. And Jeremiah tells us that he has seen affliction, that he ha has, has seen the things that uh, are going bad in his nation and with his people. And, and he sees the hand of God about to bring on judgment and it causes him to have compassion for the people. It causes him to have the drive that as a prophet that the Lord has called on the scene to warn the people that judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy thing to carry on your heart, my brothers and sisters, that when you see folk going wrong and you know they're going wrong and you know that life is not going to end up good for them, it's a heavy thing to carry on your heart. But Jeremiah says that he's seen these things. 
when we look at it and he talks about seeing affliction that he recognizes that it's not just any affliction but it's an affliction that is being brought on by God's wrath mm -hmm. the rod of God's judgment is being brought on and so it's not just any oh, affliction in our afflictions we need to come to realize that in our troubles that, that, that uh, God is either trying to turn us or he's trying to grow us. Uh, he uses his wrath, my brothers and sisters, to try to steer us back into the straight and narrow way. Mm -hmm. But he also uses his wrath, my brothers and sisters, to, to turn us, to grow us, because uh, we never uh, experienced some things, never have the growth that we could, should have and do have without God allowing us to have some afflictions mm -hmm. in our life. He was trying to turn Israel from the idol gods that they were worshiping. And you know God is a jealous God. All right. That he has told us that we should not have any other gods before him. Yes, yes, yes. And so he was trying to turn them back to himself, to the one who had created them so that they might be able to avoid destruction. Mm -hmm. He was using the prophet Jeremiah for those things. I think, my brothers and sisters, that when we look at the world scene, that God, through the storms, through the earthquakes, and through the fires, and through the floods, the viruses, and, and the violence, that he's trying to turn us back to following him instead of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we woke up this morning to the news that in Seoul, Korea, I believe it was, some 150 people at a Halloween event mm -hmm. got trampled to death. And, and we are seeing these things all around us. And uh, for us as God's people, the church, that, that, that in these times that we are called on to be more earnest in our prayers, to be more earnest in our living because we never know when destruction will come. And we don't know about the soul conditions of those that were trampled on. Some of them may have come to know the Lord. Some of them may not have come to know the Lord. But the scripture plainly defines that if we have not come to know the Lord, that, that when death overcomes us, that it's eternal destruction. Mm -hmm. So my brothers and sisters, that we need to be like Jeremiah. We need to weep for the conditions that are around us. But when we look at it for Jeremiah, God was growing him. That when his life was hedged in, when his, his eyes were red from crying, when his people were being destroyed, when he was surrounded by bitterness and hardship, when he felt surrounded by darkness and walled in to where he felt like that there was no escape. Mm -hmm. That in this situation, Jeremiah grew. Because in his growing, that in the midst of his situations, he found out, that he still had hope. All right. And that's a wonderful thing, my brothers and sisters, that, that when you can be growing through, when you are, are, are being delivered, that you can look around, that in, in the midst of your situation, your circumstances, that you can still right. realize that you still have hope, that there's something good that is still coming out of it. And, and I'm glad that we serve a God today, my brothers and sisters, who is able to take that which is bad and turn it into something good to where that he gets the glory and honor out of it and his people get to be blessed right. because of it. All right. The newness of, of the morning had gripped the prophet's mind mm -hmm. that he saw even in the midst of these destructive times that there was something different, that there was something new. Uh, the newness of what God had done had called on, caught a hold on his life. Uh, uh, the light of the day had started to uh, overrule the darkness of the night because he kept meditating, he kept talking to God. And we know the te text that tells us that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning that that, that God is the author of something new. God is the author of the newness. That He's the author of that which is coming, the joy that's coming in the morning. The joy may not always be in the morning as we know it, but, but in the morning, in the next event, in the next time, that, that, that joy is coming and, and God is the author of that joy. These, this season that we've been in for the past couple of years, there have been some dark days, my brothers and sisters. Some have lost hope, some are losing hope, and uh, there have been food shortages and higher 
gas prices that we're, we're struggling, higher rent costs and uh, uh, shortage of places to live at, if you will, high cost of living, uh, but we're experiencing low wages, if you will. And so we, we, we have these things that we have dealt with and we need some newness in our lives, my brothers and sisters. And, time when our rooms have become our Zoom rooms instead of our classrooms. We have email inboxes that uh, rather than office hours and the office is here rather than out there somewhere. And our social network, if you please, have been interrupted and, and we retreated from the that which is physical to that which is virtual and, and, and folks are, are struggling just to get out of bed mm -hmm. to be able to start their day. Come on, man. All right. Because of the the, the pressures of life because of the, the changes in life and, and all of us have to experience changes. We we deal with changes but 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 sometimes it's harder for some to cope with change. It's harder than it is for some than it is for others. And so some today, my brothers and sisters, college students especially, sometimes struggle to get out of bed because they are so overwhelmed by what's going on around them. Uh, they no longer have the, the personal connections like we used to have. And, and, and some of us, some of our elders are struggling, our brothers and sisters, to get out of bed because uh, they have no company, no visitation like they used to have, no, nobody to keep watch for them. And so my brothers and sisters, that um, we need a newness. All right. We need the newness of the morning here that the prophet talked about. When we look at the lesson today, I'm, I'm reminded that today is our, our mission Sunday. And the lesson here teaches us that we can be missionaries to others by helping them to get out of bed and being able to help them get through the day. Uh, you don't have to go off on foreign soil, my brothers and sisters, to find somebody that needs help. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to really go out of your neighborhood to find somebody nowadays that that needs some help because people are, are struggling along this journey and, and, and we need that network of people in our lives, my brothers and sisters, because it's, it's good for us. And, and when we have the right kind of fellowship, one with another is good to us as well as being good for us. When we look at Jeremiah's situation that uh, we might call him a missionary for, for the day that, that's helping us uh, to get up and get moving today, to help us uh, to be able to move tomorrow as we reflect on what God is doing. The first thing that we'll notice is that the light has come on in Jeremiah, and therefore the light must come on in us in order for us to be able to help somebody else along the way. The prophet said, this I call to mind, that is good to reflect in your mind, my brothers and sisters, and, and it's good to have experiences with the Lord in days gone by while things are peaceful, while things are good, uh, before those dark days come, that, that when you have that peace of mind with God, when you have that experience with Him on yesterday, that, that the troubles that we get into today, that we've got a God that we knew back there. We may have sent Him out temporarily, may not have worshipped Him like we ought to, may not have prayed to Him like we ought to, but past experiences tell us that, that there is a God who's still existing and that, that I can still call on Him, that I can call Him to forgive me and to get my soul right, and then I can talk to him and let him lead me in the way right. that is right and right. right. The light has to come on for us, my brothers and sisters, as it did for Jeremiah, in order that we might be able to find hope in our situation and be able to offer that hope to somebody else. The prophet says that because of the Lord's great love that we are not consumed. Mm -hmm. And this morning, my brothers and sisters, we are here. We're here. We're not somewhere else. Right. But we're here because of the Lord's great love. The Lord could have right. sent down fire like he did uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah. He could have sent down fire and consumed us if he desired. Mm -hmm. We could have been consumed through the last storm. We could have been consumed through the last earthquake. Right. But because of his tender mercies, uh, we're still here, my brothers and sisters, because of his great love for us. Who do you know would put up with us like God puts up with us? We don't even want to put up with our own selves sometimes. 
And so who, who do we know? Who else is there that would put up, put up with us? Let God put some with us. Right. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we, we got to let the light come on and and we got to discover that there is a, a, a newness of the morning that God offers to us because of his great love. He goes on to say that this is a God that his compassion fails not. Oh, we all, my brothers and sisters, stand in need of compassion from time to time. That there are things that we're just going through that sometimes that we, we just press down and, and, and we need some compassion from somebody else, you know. And, and, and especially in the body of Christ, my brothers and sisters, because in the work world sometimes that, that the devil has thrown everything that he can throw at you. And then when you have the opportunity to come to the Lord's house and the devil still keeps on trying to throw something at you. But you recognize that you're in the right place and that you're in the, uh, the, the right perspective. You're, you're with the right people and, and you'll be able, able to find God's compassion through these people. And, and it helps with the newness of that day, my brother and sister. Right. Tells us that it's a compassion that, that does not fail. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about you today, but I'm, I'm glad that God is a compassionate God. That that he's a patient God, that he's a God who is long-suffering and that he doesn't mind waiting on us, my brothers and sisters, but we need to let the light come on like Jeremiah did so that we don't wait too long because sometimes time can run out on us and we don't ever know when time will run out. He says that his compassion, his mercies are, 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 are new every morning. And, you know, when we again, when we look at it, uh, life in the physical sense of it, you know, and we look at what God does with uh, each new day, that, that that God is so broad in his thinking, he's so broad in his ways that, that, that he's able to create something different every morning when you get up. Right. Again, yesterday is not like this morning, and this morning is not like tomorrow morning is going to be mm -hmm. because of the uniqueness of who God is, that, that he has enough uh, photos in his uh, Amboy, my brothers and sisters, that he's able to give us a different photo to be able to look at every day. Some of y'all may have some art on the wall, and sometimes uh, it may not inspire you today like it did yesterday. Uh, but that, that, that's not the way God works. God is able to change the scene up and make things fresh every morning. And not only is he able to uh, have compassion and his, his mercies are new every morning, but uh, he tells us that great is the faithfulness of God. Uh, that, that, that God is like if when you go down to the bank, my brothers and sisters, and you, you start to, uh, to check out your credit report, that if you looked at God, if you looked at his credit report, that, that if you looked at his faithfulness, that, that when you're in trouble, that you can look back and you can see about the faithfulness of God. Mm -hmm. God has got a record of being faithful. He's got a record of delivering on time. May not come when we want it, right. but he's always on time. And so, my yeah. brothers and sisters, said, the, the writer tells us that great is the faithfulness of God. And then, then, then he picks it up and he says, I, I, I say to myself, you know, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Uh, you know, don't talk too loud. Now, somebody may think that something else is going wrong with you, but, but, but sometimes you got to talk to you to yourself. You got to help yourself. You know, again, in looking back at his faithfulness, you know, you got to remind yourself that God was faithful yesterday. So I believe because he was faithful yesterday that what I'm dealing with today, that he'll bring me through, he'll deliver me because of his faithfulness. He says, I, I say to myself that, that the Lord is my potion. Uh, I ask you this morning, is he your portion? Yeah. You know, when we were growing up as children, you know, that uh, food wasn't as plentiful then as it is now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so they would serve our plates sometime, and this was our portion, you know, of food in there. And so when uh, the writer talks about it here, he says that the Lord is my portion. Uh, that means that, that he's enough, mm -hmm. that he's enough. That he's more than enough, my brothers and sisters, that when we talk about him being our portion. Uh, is he your portion this morning? If he is, he'll help you if you're let. He can help you move from the tragedy of judgment to the triumph of faith. To believe that, that even though uh, the doom is uh, dark, my brothers and sisters, that, that you can uh, see things better as he lights up light. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we need to believe that it's not tragedy, but it's triumph in the Lord because of his past record. Because right. he is my portion. I will wait for him, says the writer. 
Tomorrow is not going to be like this. So I've got confidence that, that, that I can wait on the Lord. Uh, next week is not going to be like this week, that there's going to be something better down the road so I can wait on my Lord. He's been waiting on me, and it's time for me to wait on him some and, and allow him to take the reins and see what he'll do. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, in faith, I'll keep doing what I can and let the Lord work the rest of it out. In the midst of the doom and gloom, when Jeremiah had forgotten what prosperity was like, he declared that God is still faithful. He declared that God is still my portion. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when prosperity was out of sight, when, when, when the, the, the bills were longer than the money, and the month lasted longer than the check, that he still declared that the Lord is my portion. That there is a newness in the morning that right. awakens my faith again to right. be able to get out of bed and to start a new day. And, and, and in walking in faith and believing that I'm not going to be as depressed uh, today as I was yesterday. Right. And tomorrow I'm going to be less depressed then than I am right. today. And right. I'm going to be uh, a, a better person. That I'm going to discover that newness that the Lord offers. I'm going to look for it because... I know that he's able to deliver. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. When we examined the text, my brothers and sisters, Jeremiah had hope because he was growing uh, in the God of hope. Mm -hmm. And that's what helps us, my brothers and sisters, as we grow in the God of hope. Mm -hmm. He knew he was not just a person, but that he was a plan. God had a plan for him, a plan for his life. If I can help somebody today, my brothers and sisters, somebody that's out there that's struggling with life today, to know that you're not just a person, that you're not just a number, but that you are planned in the sight of God. That he knew you before you were formed in the womb. Mm -hmm. That he knows what he has desired for you. And so that you are planned of life and not just an individual. Right. Somebody said that you can't starve a person who's feeding on the promises of God. We, are, uh, we ask ourselves where are we standing at today when um, the songwriter says that when the howling storms about and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail because I'm standing on the promises of God. When you're standing on the promises of God, my brothers and sisters, you won't starve because he'll keep on feeding you. Because he will allow you to experience the newness of the day, that which is fresh every morning. That, that his goodness and his love and kindness and his mercies, that all of these things, his compassion, that they are fresh and they are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah didn't even let the funeral dredge stop him from having hope in the freshness of the morning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, that things grip us and they grip us hard. And, and they stop the freshness of the morning right. in our lives. We ought to have hope today in God and that our grief is short-lived, but God's mercy is everlasting. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you today, but I'm, I'm glad that his mercy is everlasting, that, that he has a plan that keep on reaching out right. to us day in and day out. And you know, people today need to know that God's compassion never fails. Uh, they are new every morning, and people need to know that there is help for the wounded soul. Matthew Kelly wrote in his book, Life is Messy, that grief doesn't make appointments. It has its own timetable. But grief is your friend. It may not seem like it, but it's helping you heal in life. It's a mistake to pretend that it isn't bad. It is so easy to become embarrassed or ashamed of grief. This is also a mistake. He says, have no shame in your grief. Allow it to watch over you. Invite it to heal you. Just know that while there, while there uh, will be times when the enormity of your grief seems insurmountable, you are more than your grief. Mm -hmm. Be gentle with yourself, he says. Be gentle with yourself. Kelly says that there are some things that I told myself, the things that I wrote in my journal. Some days they helped me, and some days they didn't. How about your experience, my brothers and sisters, that are there things in your life that when the day was going rough that you told yourself certain things and sometimes it, it helped and sometimes it didn't. But you keep on telling yourself these things. Keep on reminding yourself of the promises of God that he knows how to start out the day with the newness of the morning. There is, there is something 
uh, different, something about the newness of the morning that it's a freshness, it's a day that has never been revealed before. The newness of the morning lets us know that it's going to be okay because of the faithfulness of God, because of God's promises through his mercies that we are not already consumed, but sometimes life seems like that uh, we ask ourselves, what else can go wrong? But the prophet helps us in the midst of his world right. falling apart to find a moment of hope in the renewed mercies of God. Have you tried to find hope there this morning? Have you looked to God for renewing you? Have you looked to God to bless you in your circumstances? Have you asked him to deliver you from six troubles or even seven troubles that may be in your life? Oh, my brothers and sisters, in the New Testament, Jude, in his greetings to the church where apostasy had arisen in the church, false teachers were rising up and the truth of God was being attacked. It's in that setting that Jude tells the church, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. In other words, the newness of the morning will bring on new mercy for the day. All right. The newness of the morning will bring on enough peace for the day. Mm -hmm. The newness of the morning will bring on enough love for the day. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but Jude said, these things be multiplied in your life. Oh, it's good, my brothers and sisters, when the Lord gets to multiply. Because the Lord doesn't multiply like we multiply. Right. He's take, able to take just a little something and then make it into something that is great being. Yeah. And so Jude tells the church that, that he wants mercy and peace and love to be multiplied for them. And that's how I hope today for my brothers and sisters, for each of us, for those that are out there, that those that are listening today, that that's our hope for those who have no peace in this world, my brothers and sisters, for those who feel like that they are not loved, for they, they, those who feel like that, that they're going to stay in the night season, that this is a new day. It's a day that God has ordained. It's a day where he knows how our day began and how our day will end, if you will. The Lord knows what your day will be filled with. But our prayer is that your that mercy and peace and love be multiplied in your life. You remember Jesus in his teachings on the mountainside said, Be merciful just as your father is merciful. He has plenty of mercy. But he also wants us to extend that mercy toward others along life's journey. When stress fills your life, my brothers and sisters, when, when difficult times come, when the day brings more than you're able to handle, uh, when the dark clouds rise, we need to remember that there is hope. There is hope in the one who rose on the third day morning, yeah. who got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Yeah. Oh, there is hope, my brothers and sisters, for, for because of the one who uh, died on Calvary, that he paid our sinful debt. Oh, my brothers and sisters, his name is Jesus. And just as Jeremiah lamented over Jerusalem, Jesus also lamented over Jerusalem. Right. He also weeps over us. He weeps over us, over our sinful condition. Mm -hmm. But he gives us hope, my brothers and sisters, that he extends mercy to us. He extends his loving kindness toward us. He grants us forgiveness so that when we acknowledge him, that we receive forgiveness from him and that his grace is sufficient, my brothers and sisters, for today's living. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but life is not always the same every day. Every day uh, has its troubles in one sense. And on the other hand, it has its joys. But sometimes, my brothers and sisters, the troubles outweigh the joys in life. But we think about a God who created heaven and earth, a God who created us, who has a plan for us. We think about the faithfulness of God. Mm -hmm. And we think about the hymnologists as he says that great is that faithfulness. Right. That summer and winter and spring, time and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to that great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is that faithfulness, my brothers and sisters. Has it been faithful to you, my brothers and sisters? Has it brought you through the dark times of life? Has it brought you from where you were to where you are now? Is it still keeping you while you're here? Are you realizing that life is not over, that there's still a work to be done for the Lord? If you'll talk to yourself and remind yourself, my brothers and sisters, that his compassion fell not, that his mercy is renewed day in and day out. 
that his love is always there for you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if you grab hold of that this morning and, and just let the Lord keep on blessing your life, let him keep on leading you, and then you can keep on declaring, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. The songwriter didn't say unto somebody else, but he said unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. It's not just about me. He's been faithful to me, but you can claim it. And you can say, yeah, the Lord has been faithful to me. He's been faithful to me. To me, he gives me the newness of the morning if I will accept it. I pray today, my brothers and sisters, that you will accept it in the name of Jesus. That you will receive it. That God is a faithful God. And that because of his faithfulness, because of his mercies, because of his great love, that he gave us Jesus, who died for us. Who suffered a cruel and awful death for us. But he rose from the grave. Now sits at the right hand of the Father. Has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. To help us. If we allow him to help us, we'll see the newness of the day. Instead of the dark and gloominess of the seasons that come around us. That should be one today. We extend the invitation to you. As one who has not made a decision for Jesus Christ, we invite you to come. We invite you to stand in honor of the invitation.